Hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, the second problem from homework set one that I would like to explain to you. Um, hopefully this is going to be also helpful. So in this question uh, from the second chapter of the book, uh, an actual circuit uh, is uh, shown with the uh, with the schematics of the components, the actual components that are used. And the question is asking to construct a circuit model for this. And uh, it appears to be showing uh, basically part of the uh, circuits that are used in a, uh, in a car where the battery is connected to two light bulbs through a switch. And uh, now the question is explaining to you that this symbol that is used here it's telling you that this uh, wire actually gets connected directly to the metallic frame of the car now uh, what does it mean why is it done and what's going on here so see if you want to connect uh, in order to get current passing through an electrical co uh, component like a battery like a, a light bulb as we explained you have to apply a potential difference across the uh, the light bulb in other words let's say you do have a battery here and there is a potential difference between these two nodes uh, this is the higher potential this is the lower potential let's say this is just 1.5 volts and then you want to turn on a light bulb uh, now Again, I'm just drawing the actual light bulb here. Now, if you take this and connect it there, and the second connection is not connected to anything, what do you think is going to happen? Um, nothing. There, there won't be anything going on. The reason is that y there is no potential difference yet between the two terminals of this uh, this light bulb you have just connected on one end to one potential but the potential of the other one is just left hanging and because of that there's no potential difference these two still are at the same potential by just connecting them through this one wire in order to create the potential difference you have to close this loop and the other end of this battery actually has to be connected here at which point the same potential difference that was here is now across this light bulb and therefore you're going to start getting uh, current which is a result of the energy difference uh, between the two uh, ends of this uh, light bulb which causes the current to pass through so closing this loop is critical in order to actually get the currents moving um, now in a car as you know the battery is somewhere is under the hood and if you have a light bulb somewhere else and you just want to take the positive move it all the way to the light bulb and then take the other end and move it all the way like connect it all the way to the uh, second uh, terminal you're going to need two wires but as you know in a lot of uh, uh, automobiles the the frame of the car is made of a conductor a lot of times it's a metal and metals are good conductors and it's a big chunk of metal so the resistance of that piece of metal is a small so instead of using two wires to get to the light bulb that is in a different part of the car you can actually take one wire to go there and then take the other terminal of the light bulb and connect it to the frame of the car so so this is not going to be a wire that goes all the way back to the battery under the hood instead you just take it and connect it to the frame and as long as you take this one and also connect it to the same frame then the current is going to basically go through the uh, the uh, frame of the car and goes back to the battery in other words you're going to use the the body of the car to uh, save on some of these wires since the the body of the car is already there you have to have it 
uh, then you're just saving on weight that you put on a car by cutting the uh, need for these wires basically cutting the need for the wires to half okay so that's what's going on here there is actually a conductor between the two and that's why these are all at the same potential using the same symbol here shows that there is a good conductor in between but it's not a wire it's actually the whole frame of your car but since the frame is made of a conductor it's basically a conductor in between you're just not showing it because it's not a wire okay that's said to show this uh, circuit this uh, bit symbols we can show the battery with a symbol like this which is this is the positive terminal this is the negative terminal so that represents the battery and that's 12 volts and then the wire from the negative positive terminal goes to a switch you can show a switch like that and then it goes and uh, splits between two wires and each one goes to a light bulb and you can show a light bulb as we discussed with just a simple resistor so you have the resistor of the light bulb A and the resistance of the light bulb B and then these two both get connected to the frame now what you can do is to connect them all to each other or you can connect them like that with uh, uh, one uh, symbol that sh says that's your reference so this this could be your reference also at the same time it shows that are connected all to the same point but that same point could be also your reference you can choose to say that's my reference as well so this circuit is now representing uh, what you had in actuality and uh, as soon as you connect this switch there's going to be current passing through the two light bulbs and you're going to get uh, light. Now there was a question was submitted that I meant to answer during the Zoom session. I didn't get to talk to you about that. I'm going to take the opportunity and discuss this here because this was a really good question. Someone asked, why do we get light when there is current passing through a light bulb? That's a really good question and I'm going to attempt to do it here, but uh, I certainly encourage you to do uh, more reading about it. So when uh, current passes through a resistor, it's the movement of the electrons through that material that uh, is being resisted by uh, the internal atomic structure of uh, the light bulb. And in other words, as the electrons move through, they start interacting with other uh, atomic and subatomic particles inside that matter and through that interaction they lose energy right I uh, I this I kinda used an analog with that and I, I told you assume that there's a ball moving on a ramp and in between uh, there are other bulbs uh, so as it moves down it's just gonna hit these other balls and every time that it hits an, a, another ball, some of the energy of that ball is going to be transferred to that other ball, right? You can imagine that's the same thing that is going on in a resistor. And every time that they hit each other, there is some energy transfer. And that transfer of energy is actually in the form of a vibration. So these start moving more. And temperature is actually an average uh, is, is a quantity that uh, that captures the average energy of uh, the particles in the system so as the electron passes through that average energy is increasing because each one of these particles are moving more and because of that the temperature here starts going up and up um, now some of that transfer of energy between the, the, the electron that is trying to move uh, and the electrons that are in, in the uh, material is going to come in the form of the electrons moving to higher levels of energy. So this is a quantum mechanical uh, concept and it's I have to at this point tell you that the electrons around an, uh, a center, a nucleus, uh, they actually uh, have certain levels of energy 
and these levels of energy are discrete um, it's not an analog continuous uh, function and uh, once they gain energy they move to higher energy levels uh, and by this electron transferring some of energy to some other electrons in the circuit because it's in interacting energy it means that the electron moves from a certain level of energy this is an, a level of energy to an, a different level of energy that is up there now if this electron uh, is gaining energy as we said generally speaking systems would uh, like to basically go to lower en energy levels in general entropy is in is, uh, is always increasing in every system uh, so the uh, the higher energy level is unstable and you want the system would like to go back to the lower energy level naturally and uh, once that happens and the electron leaves the high energy levels and moves back to the lower energy So when this process happens and the electron wants to move back, back, the difference between the energy has to come in some form, right? And sometimes that form of energy is actually a photon that is being uh, released, okay? And the photon is the unit for electromagnetic energy, okay? And now if this frequency of the photon is in the range in the range of frequency that our eye can actually detect then uh, you start s seeing this resistor glowing right if the photon is at a, a lower frequencies then or higher frequencies for that matter outside the range that our eye can detect then you don't see any light coming off of the resistor but actually if you hold your hand close to it you can sense the heat uh, basically these photons are still coming out of the material even if you don't see them uh, in the form of lower energy photons or sometimes higher energy photons um, so the resistor always emitting energy in the form of photons if you heat it up enough so that the difference between these two levels of energy is large enough then when the electron comes back the frequency of the photon which is proportional to this energy difference is going to be high enough so that our eye is going to start detecting it and that's the point that you're going to start seeing the resistor glow now as the, the this resistor gets hotter and hotter the frequencies go up and up and up so if you, in a certain range of frequency you're going to see the resistor glowing in red and then as the colors start getting uh, closer and closer and closer to white and uh, if you really heat it really really high there are going to be some uh, x-ray and some ultraviolet uh, and photons also emitted and most of the time before that happens everything here is going to melt uh, but just there are cases that you can get uh, high energy photons before everything melts okay so that's a, why an incandescent light bulb is actually inefficient because a large portion portion of this energy that is being released uh, as the electrons move to higher energies and coming back to lower energy is going to be in the form of uh, photons that uh, our eye can't detect they're basically low energy photons or they're going to be some phonons basically in the form of vibration of the nucleus or the uh, or the electrons themselves uh, which is just low grade heat sometimes it's called uh, that it's really not useful here for us 
Okay, hopefully that has been helpful. This is a really interesting question uh, and uh, my description is not detailed enough. There's a lot more is going on. Uh, you have to know a little bit of quantum mechanics uh, to appreciate some of what I said. But uh, I hope this was at least a good start for you to uh, look for more information about this. Thank you very much.